So how are you guys all coping with the lockdowns all over the world then? Oh, I'm so glad we've got the garden. I really don't know how we would have coped if we didn't have a garden to go out into. Even right now, when it's all rainy and horrible, I've got to go and add some paper to the hot bin, and I'm kind of glad, because I've been in all day working from home. So I thought this is a perfect chance. Let's go and have a chat about the hot bin. Let's go. Ah, so, yep, um, as you'll see, different day, same outfit, um, but basically things went wrong. So I recorded an awesome video, even if I do say so myself, it was the best video ever. <sighs> yeah, um, <laughs> but being the total doofus I am, I forgot to hit the record button. So that's not happening. Um, so what I did then was I put a wee message out on Instagram and on Twitter to you guys and just said, I'm doing a hot bin composter video, what questions have you got? And that's what I'm going to do today because basically my video was actually talking about my experience over the last couple of years and how I've triumphed over any problems I had been having. So basically all the secrets I've learned the last couple of years. So I thought, okay, let's answer your questions um, based on my personal experience. So like everything else I do, I don't work for any of these companies um, when I use these products, which is why I can't give the proper official advice on things. I can only give you advice based on my personal experience. But I think in a lot of ways to us as gardeners, that's really valuable because like I say about things like the weather, um, my experience of being a gardener here in Scotland is really, really valuable to other people in areas like mine because if the only info you're getting are from people who are in a completely different climate you know it makes life hard so same instance hop in composter from my personal experience so here we go so i got a whole bundle of questions back but essentially uh they were kind of five top very very obviously top questions that were coming in so here we go so i've got them here so i collated everything that came in so these aren't from individual people um, but the main one, obviously, I think you guys know what the first one's going to be. The, the number one of the top five was, does it really actually get that hot? <sighs> so if you've seen all the advertising all about the hot bin composter, what you'll see them saying is that it basically can get up to about 60 degrees centigrade, which means it kills kind of perennial weeds and all that kind of stuff that might be getting put in there. So you can put in those types of things. And also, because it gets that hot, you can put in kitchen waste, things like scraps of raw meat and stuff, and it will deal with them. So does it really get that hot, Eli? Actually, yeah, it does. I have seen it get that hot. Um, I've seen it get hotter than that as well. You know, I've done that whole, in fact, you know my usual thing, I'll splice in clips over the past two years to show you my experience as I talk about things. But yeah, I've opened that bin up and got a proper facial with the steam, like a proper big column of steam coming out of there. Um, now this is another question that comes in later on. So basically based on the whole, does it really get that hot? So yes, yes, it does actually get that hot if you do everything the way they recommend you do it. But, but we're also getting lots of questions in about does it stay hot all the time or mine doesn't stay that hot? Yeah, this is, a, this is, I'm not going to say it's a problem because it's not a problem, but this is something that we found with it as well. So the first year, obviously, it was new and I didn't really know what was going on, so I assumed I was always in the wrong. Quite a lot of the time I was, to be honest. Um, but now I know better. So basically, yes, it does get that hot, but it will only stay that hot if you're always meeting all the sort of like requirements if you like so if to, to do that right to keep it hot you need to be adding about two caddies you know the kitchen waste caddies you need to be adding about two of them a week so i think it works out at about five kilograms or 10 liters they say of waste every single week and um, we can't keep our bin that hot it's not possible for us because we don't have that much waste Okay. In the summer, when we're cutting the lawn a lot, we've got a lot of lawn clippings, we can get the temperatures up and then it drops, and then it comes up and then it drops. But as for just general waste out of the garden or the kitchen, we just don't have that much. Yeah. There's only two of us in the house. It's, we've got a small household. We're a paperless household. We do our best to reduce waste, so we just don't have all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, we don't get it keeping up to those temperatures either, but it's not a problem. 
I, I live next to a cycle path in a park, so there's people out getting their, their one one lot of exercise for the day. So if you can hear them, that's that. So yeah, so hot bin compost. You need to make sure you're adding, consistently adding the right amount of waste. So that's 10 kilos of, no, five kilos, 10 litres of waste every single week. You need to make sure it's the right mix of waste. So it needs to be the right amount of paper, the right amount of green, brown, and you need to be adding what they call bulk and chips, but basically something that's slightly larger because it causes air pockets. And also you need to be aerating it. So you need to be doing all of that stuff if you want to keep those temperatures up there. Okay, so it is totally possible. It's not as easy for us, but you know, we do see it in summer. We do see the bin hot quite often. Winter, not so. Not a hassle, it just means it's not a hot compost pile in the winter when it's cold. It's still composting, just not quickly. Okay. Um, okay, so I've just answered three questions. Cool. <laughs> okay, the other one that was coming in a lot, and this is something you guys saw was a big issue for me. It was, mine's is really wet. Is it meant to be wet? Right, here's the thing. You guys saw, and I talked about this in the videos, when I took my compost out and emptied the bin, it was quite wet, and I had to actually lay it all out in a tarp in the sun and let it dry a bit before I could then work with it and sieve it and decide what I was using it for and stuff. Um, and from what I hear from you guys, it's quite common. A lot of you are seeing that it's quite wet. Um, because I've been through this and I've worked out what it is, I can help you with this. Always nice to feel helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so basically the reason that it's always, not always, the reason that I was finding it was quite wet quite a lot of the time, so my neighbours just got up in the morning, the reason I was finding it was quite wet quite a lot of the time um, was just again down to the mix and it was my misunderstanding I think. The very early videos I watched about this, trying to work out the amounts to add was difficult because they always spoke about adding these kitchen caddies and we don't put any waste out at all so we don't use those caddies, we're just putting waste in as we've got it. So I was trying to work out when he was talking about one caddy and so many handfuls and of course he's got massive hands, I've got tiny hands and so I wasn't getting the mix right and the thing I was getting the most wrong was the paper I wasn't adding enough paper okay so basically to get that dry you need to again it's about consistency okay it's gardening folks gardening is always about being consistent to get that dry um proper compost feel to it you need to be adding 50 percent paper so whatever you're adding as your kind of green brown waste you know that that bundle you're doing um, you need to add 50% again of paper half as much again of paper um, and at first when I started doing that I was thinking oh this is far too much too much paper because you see the paper for quite a while and it's a bit Ooh. but trust me that's the trick and that also when I was really struggling to get the temperatures up once I got that right amount of paper, I saw the temperature rocket up overnight. It really made a difference. So yeah, if it's really, really wet, you've got too much of your green stuff in there, okay? Because that stuff's all got moisture in it. So you just compensate by adding more paper. And lastly, give it a really good mix, okay? And um, that's the thing. Again, I've answered two questions in one. Um, so that's the thing. It needs to be aerated. This works using aerobic bacteria, not anaerobic bacteria, which is a good thing because it's the anaerobic bacteria that make the nasty smells you don't want. So they tell you in the videos that, oh, just give the top just a bit of a, a shugle over with the hook thing they give you. So I say no, actually keep the top going as you're working through, but every so often just give it a really good stir and get it not quite turned over, but get the air in there. It makes a massive difference, okay? So I didn't, you know what I'm like, you know me, I didn't properly do question one, two, three, four, five. I kind of answered them all in between. So here we go. In summary then, number one, does it really get up to those temperatures? Yes, yes it does, if you do everything right. Number two, why is mine so wet? Um, Basically, I suspect because you're adding too much of the green stuff and not enough paper. So adjust your balance. Uh, does it stay hot all the time? Yes. Yes, it does stay hot all the time. If you get the right balance and you're constantly feeding it. You need to be feeding it 5 kilos or 10 litres or two of those kitchen caddies every single week. Spaced out over the week, obviously. Um, do, do, do. 
How do I know if I'm adding the right amounts? Well, basically, I've just told you the right amounts are whatever you're adding, your green, you need to add half as much again of paper and a good three or four little handfuls or two or three big handfuls of some sort of larger, harder thing like wood chips to help create little layer pockets, like torn up cardboard, things like that to create little layer pockets. And you need to make sure you give it a good mix about every so often. Um, and lastly, mine doesn't seem to be getting hot. Well, yep, again, this is a different thing. I've saved this thing cause this is the bit that confuses a lot of people. And I've saved this to the end as more of a, an instructional gig thing. When you first get it going, okay, um, if you're like me, I didn't have anything to start it with, so I started from scratch. And again, this time round, because we've just put all the extra stuff into the new raised bed, I'm starting with an empty bin again and starting from scratch again. So when you start from scratch and you've only got little bits, it won't get hot. It's going to take time to build it up. It basically, your bin needs to be full to the point where the waste in it is higher than the door of the hatch. And when it gets to that height, that's when it will start generating the heat um, because you need that amount of stuff, okay? Um, if you're just like me and you're just adding a little bit at a time, it's going to take three or four weeks probably to fill it up. You just need to be patient. Okay, so that's the trick. You need to have the right stuff, the right balances, but also the right amount. If you've already got a compost bin and you're switching over, you can transfer some of your compost you already have into the bin and then start feeding it into that and you'll see those temperatures much quicker. I've just waffled for about 45 minutes again, haven't I? Sorry guys, it's me. I waffle. I can't help it. I've tried doing the whole planning for these YouTube videos like other people do and it just feels really false. It feels like I'm just following a script. Um, so yeah, so the, the, I, I waffle and you get these super long videos. I hope you don't mind, but it means you actually get the real me. Uh, okay, right. Well, I have to get on with some stuff now. Um, yeah, so I hope that was fun and you enjoyed it. Um, as always, if you like my big long waffly videos where I just talk nonsense at you for ages, hit that thumbs up, give me a like, let me know this is the type of stuff you like. Subscribe if you want to keep seeing more of this stuff and hit that bell if you want to get notified next time I post a video. I'm getting the hang of this now, aren't I? And thanks JB for saying that I'm getting good at this. Bye everyone! <laughs>